on a chilly 35 degree day in the city of brotherly love we're at lincoln financial field for the eight and five new york jets facing the five and eight philadelphia eagles marv albert with rich gannon we get right to it the jets won the toss they have deferred philadelphia will receive the rookie out of pit Dion lewis fifth round draft pick averaging about 22 yards per return will be back for the kickoff from Nick Falk. And here we go. Lewis will run it out. Able to dodge a tackler and comes across the 15. And here is Michael Vick. Who returned last week in Miami, Rich, after missing three games with fractured ribs. Yeah, and I think he got off to kind of a slow start, a little rusty. He's feeling much better. He's taking more practice reps, and I think that's going to make a huge difference with Michael Vick. Philadelphia Eagles with LaShawn McCoy as the feature back. He has run for 1,172 yards, second in rushing in the NFL. McCoy looks to turn the corner. Did not have a particularly good day last week. And a win over Miami. And for the Eagles up front, the rookie sixth round draft pick, Jason Kelsey, anchors that offensive line. The left tackle pro bowler, Jason Peters, has played well. Baxson receivers. We talked about McCoy, third year player out of Pitt. Also leads the NFL in touchdowns with 17. Now they go with the empty backfield. Vick with a long walk, able to side on and completes. First down and much more as he hooks up with the tight end, Brent Selleck. Catch number 50 on the season for the Eagles' leading receiver. Well, it all starts with good protection up front. You mentioned the empty backfield set. Michael Vick moving around, finding his tight end, Brett Selleck. Right there, Bart Scott's got to make that play. He loses vision right there, not able to get that right arm up there and knock that one down. 38-yard pass play and a first down for the Eagles at the Jet. 44. We are just underway. Vic finding a hole and reaches out to the 42 yard line. The Jets defensively ranked number six in the league. Defensive end Muhammad Wilkerson, the rookie first round pick out of Temple, knows this field well from his college days. The linebackers. 10-year man Bart Scott, an emotional player with Rex Ryan in Baltimore. In the secondary, three-time Pro Bowl corner, Darrell Rivas. And he'll spend much uh, up close and personal time with Deshaun Jackson. And uh, Rodney Poole is playing for the injured Jim Leonard, who's out for the season. That's a big loss for the Jets. Again, it is McCoy. And he is stopped by the outside linebacker, Calvin Pace. Now, if the Eagles lose here today, they are out in terms of the playoffs. If they win, they, they must win their final two games to have a shot for the wild card and can even win the NFC East as hard as that is to believe with a record of 5-8 and eight at this point. And they got some help from their friend, the Giants, uh, losing today in a disappointing loss at home to the Redskins. So... A little help from the Giants certainly helps. Third down and six. So Vic making changes at the line. Vic's pass is broken up. Intended for Jeremy Macklin. And Rodney Poole got a piece of it. Well, really nice job with the protection. Michael Vick has got to step up and hit this one. You, you got Jeremy Macklin working across the middle of the field. You got to put it on him. You lead him out in front right into the hit, right into Rodney Poole, who's waiting on Macklin. Chaz Henry will come on to punt. 
And Jeremy Curley is back deep. Jim Leonard had taken over the punt return duties from uh, Curley, who did have some difficulties several games back. Fair catch at the six-yard line. It's a 34-yard punt, so it will be the Jets to the offense for the first time. Mark Sanchez taking the field. He's come out in recent weeks after struggling and hearing some boos back home. Yeah, yeah, I think he's happy to be on the road. You know, he, the last we saw Mark Sanchez was three weeks ago, Marvin. Rex was busy taking away some of his reps at practice, but boy, this guy's responded last three games. He's put the Jets in a position to control their playoff destiny. Seven touchdowns and just one interception. And you can hear the Philadelphia crowd trying to make things difficult for Mark Sanchez. Goes to the ground, Sean Green, who has been superb. He has been Mr. December for the Jets. Picked up a two, a look at the offensive line. They played well as of late, particularly with the uh, Pro Bowl center, Nick Mango, back from that sprained ankle earlier in the season. I mentioned Green has come on strong last week against Kansas City, ran for a season high of 129 yards. Green is alone, set back. One, 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 one. Second and eight. Green finds a hole and pulls his way across the 20 yard line. First down for the Jets. Kurt Coleman, the strong safety. On the tackle, look at the Eagles defensively up front. Jason Babin having a career year, has 15 sacks, second in the NFL. The linebackers, Jamar Cheney, leads Philadelphia in total tackles. As for the secondary, more was expected from Nandi Asamoa, former pro bowler. And off the Wildcat, Green, with the direct snap. And the Jets in recent games have gone to the Wildcat more frequently. That's good for a six-yard pickup. Yeah, they're mixing it in, and it's not just... Sean Green, we saw it with Ladanian Tomlinson, we saw it with Jeremy Curley last week, so they're getting more and more of it. And I think some of that comes from Rex Ryan and talking to Brian Schottenheimer last night. He said, Rex hates preparing for it as a defense. We need to do more of it as an offense. Brian Schottenheimer, who has been in the news the past few days. 180! Rumors circulating that uh, he is being considered as the next head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Green has a first down across the 40-yard line. He's stopped by the free safety, Nate Allen. That's a pickup of 13. Well, I think the game plan's pretty straightforward for the Jets. They want to run the ball right downhill at this smaller front seven of the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is really where they have struggled in stopping the run. They're small, they're undersized, and they're inexperienced at linebacker. Now Ladadian Tomlinson is on the field for the first time. Green, four carries. 33 yards here at the start. Sanchez on the screen. Nothing there. Tomlinson with the catch and battered by Casey Matthews, the, the outside linebacker. It is a loss of four. And we're seeing more and more of Casey Matthews. This is just a good alert play by him, recognizing the screen and getting out in front of Nick Mangle before he could even get up on the second level. I mentioned the playoff situation for the Eagles, and they are still alive. Different type of scenario for the Jets in a scramble with Oakland and Cincinnati and Tennessee. Second down at 14 for Sanchez. Able to complete to Santonio Holmes. The ball is lost on the fumble and is picked up. To Quay Parker. For the touchdown! Jaquay Parker in his 11th year out of Oklahoma State. And let's check this out. Well, you get a good look at Santonio Holmes. It looks like that ball is starting to come out before he actually hits the ground. Yeah, it sure is. Well, oh, a big hit there by Kurt Coleman. He's the one that gets a helmet on it. You see Matthews begin to hold him down, and then Jaquay Parker's able to pick it up, and he just follows his line mates right down the field. 
Now the point after by Alex Henry. Uh, this is what the Eagles need, Marv. The Eagles have not gotten off to particularly good starts, particularly here at home. They have struggled. They need to get this crowd into it. 47-yard return, and apparently they're going to review it in the booth. Yeah, watch this hit by Coleman. He puts his helmet right on the ball in San Antonio. That, that thing's definitely coming out, and you can see Matthews there. Santonio San Holmes is trying to get control of it again, but you watch the hit right here by Kurt Coleman. That ball is already loose, and it's coming out. All scoring plays automatically reviewed upstairs, and that is exactly what they are uh, taking a look at. Well, that's a big-time hit. And then a good alert play by Jaquay Parker. I mean, he just... He doesn't hear a whistle, so he just scrapes it up. The Jets coming into today with 24 turnovers, eighth most in the league with 13 of those 24 fumbles. Yeah, it's been a problem. And, you know, they talk about the turnovers. They've committed at least one turnover in eight straight games, and that's something they're trying to get cleaned up. You just don't give yourself a chance when you put the ball on the ground, particularly on the road. Although, in this case, the home team has not done very well. No, they have they dropped five of their last six here at home, which has certainly uh, puzzled fans in Philadelphia, and it has not been a happy crowd during the course of home games. And a big reason, Marv, is because of the turnovers. The Philadelphia Eagles have turned the ball over 31 times. The only team that's turned over more are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're still checking out as to whether the runner was down. Ball picked up by Jaquay Parker and a run in for the touchdown. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a touchdown. So it is indeed a Eagle touchdown. As we welcome those of you joining us, Marv Albert, Rich Gannon from Philadelphia, here's a look at uh, what they were looking at upstairs. Yeah, you can see Kurt Coleman gets his helmet on it. The ball's coming loose for San Antonio Holmes. Casey Matthews is able to hold him on the ground, and Jaquay Parker picks it up and goes the distance. Alex Henry with the point after. Eagles have a 7 nothing lead on the Jets. You saw Jaquay Parker, the huge defensive end, come up with a second career touchdown. Now you look at that 25 giveaways this year. They've given up 100 points. And that's amazing. It's, it's amazing that they're even in playoff contention. If you turn the ball over like that, you don't give yourself a chance. You put the defense in bad position. In fact, in that situation, defense didn't get a chance to get on the field. Santonio Holmes has to do a better job taking care of the football. Antonio Cromartie is back deep. He was returning kickoffs last week for the injured Joe McDonough. And he's uh, doing the job again and doing it quite well as he reaches out near the 30-yard line, Keenan Clayton able to make the stop, so the Jets back to the offense. Sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Sherlock Holmes, a game of shadows, now playing in theaters everywhere. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Well, for the Jets, their 14th fumble of the season. That's the most in the NFL, and obviously a costly one. Sean Green and the fullback, John Cotter in the backfield. Sanchez throwing incomplete, but a flag comes flying. Pass intended for Santonio Holmes, covered by Asante Samuel. Referee has Cleet Blakeman, who happens to be an attorney. Pass interference. Defense number 22. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. All right, right here, we're set for an update. Let's go to JB and Coach Bill Cowher. Tim Tebow leads an opening 80-yard drive for the Broncos, but... Yeah, they did it through the air. Response right here, Brady to Chad Ochocinco, his first touchdown catch of the season. It's 7-7. Marv and Rich. All right, guys, so on that uh, penalty flag against Asante Samuel, it's a first and 10 for the Jets. Green battles his way. 
Picks up three. Able to bring across the 40-yard line. And for the Jets, obviously it is a critical game in terms of their playoff hopes after going through their ups and downs. They have won three in a row coming off the blowout over Kansas City. Last week, they stay with Green and Connor as the running back. 7-0 lead for the Eagles. Play fake, Sanchez taken down. And that is the 16th sack of the season for Jason Babin. What a year for the pro bowler who came to the Eagles from Tennessee. Well, you can't let this happen. You know Jason Babin is as hot as any defensive end in the game right now. Wayne Hunter is going to have his hands full all day. He's got to be more aggressive, and he can't let him beat him around the edge. That's what these two ends want to do. Jason Babbitt and Trent Cole, they want to beat you with speed off the edge. Let's on that score on the update. New England in front of Denver, 7-6. to six. Third and 14, Sanchez off the back pedal, on the screen, Tomlinson. Able to bring it across the 41-yard line, picked up nine on the play. Getting back to Jason Babbitt. Coming into today, tied for second in sacks behind the uh, Vikings, Jared Allen. After three last week in Miami, the Eagles franchise high is 21, pulled off by Reggie White back in 1987. Running unit is back on, the dangerous Deshaun Jackson lets it high, take a high hop. And off the uh, scramble, the ball is batted around at the 15-yard line. Well, this should never happen. You watch Deshaun Jackson. He's calling them off. He's, he's alerting his teammates that are running down, covering the punt to get out of the way. And for some reason, Curtis Marsh, he doesn't. He's still blocking. He never hears the call by Deshaun Jackson. And you think about special really teams issues. Field. Last Receiver week, touched the ball, was recovered inbounds by New York. First down, New York. So Marsh touched the ball, which made it a live ball, and then Ellis Langster of the Jets was able to recover. Yeah, and special teams have been a problem for the Eagles the last couple of weeks. Marsh had a fumble on a on a trick punt return last week. They had a punt blocked last week in Miami. Special teams really hurting the Eagles. Break for the Jets, first down at the Philadelphia 14-yard line. Green is stopped. Stopped at the line. Well, we talked about the problems last week with the special teams. They had a couple mistakes that were costly. The first quarter, Chaz Henry's punt was blocked, leading to a Dolphins touchdown. Then in the second quarter, on a punt return, Deshaun Jackson attempted a lateral to Curtis Marsh, who fumbled away to the Dolphins. I mean, these are the mistakes right now that are absolutely killing the Eagles. Second out and 10 for the Jets. Mark Sanchez working out of the shotgun. And that is intercepted out of deflection. Asante Samuel with the pick, his third of the season. It went through the hands of Santonio Holmes, who has had a very rough first quarter. Asante Samuel, pro bowler, the last four years, a former Patriot coming up. You can't fault Mark Sanchez here. He makes a good read and a good throw. I think Santonio Holmes is just a little antsy. He's anxious to get into the transition there. He forgets to catch the ball, and Asante Samuel right there to make a play. Big stop for the Eagles. They give up that, they, they get that turnover on the, on the punt return. The defense is able to go out there, not only get a stop, but to come right back with a big turnover. Six minutes remaining in this first quarter. 7-0 Eagles over the Jets. Empty backfield for Michael Vick and the Eagles. Vick completes. Jeremy Macklin with his 48th catch of the season. Covered by Kyle Wilson. That's good for 16. 
So the scenario for the Jets coming into today, they're going to scramble with Cincinnati. Cincinnati beat St. Louis. Tennessee, Tennessee lost to Indianapolis. And with Oakland, they are playing at home against Detroit. Rex Ryan saying, we have to win out to make that final wild card spot. Incidentally, with the Titans losing to the Colts, Colts with their first win of the season, Pittsburgh now has clinched a playoff spot. Deion Lewis squeezing his way, found a hole, and he brings to the 47, met by Calvin Pace. He is just short of a first down. Well, you think about the fans, they're frustrated here in Philadelphia after all the preseason hype, and hey, it's got so much talent. You know, you look at this team, it's a group that, in my opinion, has underperformed. They've won just five games. I think a big reason why is because they've turned it over 31 times. We've talked about that. You just don't give yourself a chance to win when you do that. And finally, the defense has been inconsistent, particularly when it comes to stopping the run. LaShawn McCoy returning to the backfield. McCoy has the first down. Running hard across the 45, and he goes for eight. Last year ran for 1,000, had 78 receptions. Well, they like to run the ball around that left side of that offensive line. If you watch LaShawn McCoy at times, he can carry that ball away from his body. They've talked about that. The Jets trying to get it out, but he doesn't put it on the ground. I think he uses that more for balance, but he's got great speed, and he really concerns you when he gets up on the second level. Philadelphia first and 10 from the Jet, 43. McCoy stretching it to the outside, and that is run out of bounds by Rodney Poole. Goes for six. Once again, let's check in with J.B., and Coach Bill Cowan. Hey, Marv, two possessions by the Broncos, two scores. Yeah, this one's a 32-yard Lance Ball rushing touchdown. They have 133 yards rushing already in the first quarter. They mixed, missed the extra point of the first touchdown, so they lead 13-7. Unbelievable. Marv Albert. And back in Philadelphia, second down and four for the Eagles. Right, Woody! Quick put the first down and Moore works his way inside the 30. The Jets thought they had him behind the, the line, and then David Harris was able to force him out. Well, this is progress if you're the Philadelphia Eagles. You see they bring the blitz, and Michael Vick too quick. Kyle Wilson can't hang with him. Now this is progress. Getting out of bounds and not taking unnecessary hits. Talking to Marty Morningway, so this drives us crazy. He's such an athlete. He's got such speed and quickness, but he's taken too many hits. We can't afford to lose this guy three or four weeks every season. And now the Eagles go with a split. Backfield, McCoy and Roddy Brown, the former Miami Dolphin. First down play. Brown. Then you look back, one of the unfortunate occurrences for the Eagles in this extremely disappointing season was Vince Young's reference to the label of Dream Team. That was right after he had signed, and that has dramatically backfired, although from the Jets' point of view, and as Rex Ryan mentioned it several times last night in our chat with him, they are a very dangerous team. Yeah, I don't think you realize he created kind of a, a firestorm with that comment. I think he was just basically talking about how excited he was to be here in Philadelphia with so many great players. Second down and 10. Off the fake handoff. Fix pass. Oh, it's caught! What a catch by the tight end, Brett Selleck, and he's in for the touchdown! Selleck had it, then bobbled, was able to recover, and comes up with his third touchdown reception of the season. And that is a big-time throw by Michael Vick. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 97. Personal foul on, the kickoff on Calvin play Pace for his hit on Michael Vick. Well, it'll be a... To be a great quarterback, you've got to be able to sit in there in the pocket. That's just what Michael Vick does here. Calvin Pace is going to hit him right in the face. There's, what, there's the foul, but Brent Sella, great concentration, one-handed one grab. 
and he is a very big target for Michael Vick. That goes back to the interpretation of the player being defenseless. So Vick took the shot. The extra point by Henry Good. Beautiful catch by Sonic. And the Eagles have a 14-0 lead on the guess is sponsored by Jaguar. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. And by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. We are back at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Seven plays 77 yards. And Brent Selleck with the touchdown catch. That was a big time throw by Michael Vick. I mean, to sit in there, you know the rush is coming. You give your tight end a chance to make a play down the field. And Good offenses are able to take advantage of field position and turnovers. Antonio Cromartie is back deep. Alex Henry with the kick. And he uh, is able to put it to the back of the end zone because of that uh, personal foul that was called on Calvin Pace. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We always talk about getting off to a good start. San Antonio Holmes has had a rough first quarter here in Philadelphia. Starts with the fumble. That results in a touchdown by Philadelphia. Then very next series there. A little quick. A little quick with his eyes. And you think about the Eagles' first, or the, the Jets' first three possessions. That's, that's ugly. Fumble. And you got the three and out. And then the two plays, interception. You need to take a deep breath here and settle down. Sean Green on a direct snap once again. Not much there. The Jets have been going to the Wildcat the last three games. Just a, a yard on the play. Rick's Ryan has been telling his team, forget about the Eagles' record of 5-8. and eight. You can see why. Did not want to make the mistake that his brother Rob did. Rob Ryan, the Cowboys defensive coordinator, called the Eagles an all-hype team before the Cowboys played the Eagles late October final score Philadelphia 34 and Dallas 7 what second down and nine again it is green this time for five Sean Green now the starting running back after backing up Thomas Jones and Ladanian Tomlinson his first two years in the league out of Iowa now Tomlinson has checked in Third down and three. Down to a minute left in this opening quarter. Now you look at these pass rushers here right in the middle. Here comes the pressure. This is what the Eagles want to do. And a penalty marker is down. Jets try to argue their case. Ball start. Offense from the 78. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's the right tackle, Wayne Hunter. Well, you got to be able to sit in there, and so many people are moving around. You see Wayne Hunter right here, and look at this is Babin and Cole. They're just trying to get up in there and trying to confuse that front. Typically, we see those two players lined up as end men on the line of scrimmage. Jim Washburn moving around a little bit. Wayne Hunter's got to sit in there. They can't flinch. And the Jets also arguing they felt that the Eagles were drawn offside. It's a third down at eight. And here they come. Sanchez taken down. It is Jason Bavin with his second sack of the quarter. It is number 17 on the season. Well, he's not always going to be the end man on the line of scrimmage. You're going to see him here, and you're just getting him to cross the face of the center. You've got to be able to make the communication and pass these things off. And they don't get it taken care of. Matt Slauson, that left side of that offensive line, they don't get it communicated. And they get Jason Bavin a clean shot on Mark Sanchez. Here's T.J. Conley. On a short punt, fair catch, called for by Deshaun Jackson. 
and a flag down. When you look at Jason Babin, seven sacks in his last three games, the guy is hot. Yeah, I say. <laughs> you better get up there and you better identify number 93 and have a plan for how you're going to account for him. Holding, receiving team, number 57. 10-yard penalty, first down. It is called on Keenan Clayton. Well, the Eagles and the Jets first met back in 1973. And uh, in week five of the 93 season, Boomer Esiason had four touchdown passes, but in the fourth quarter with the Jets up two and driving, Eric Allen intercepted Boomer and returned at 94 yards for the touchdown. Eagles held on to win it 35-30. <laughs> and the Eagles have won the previous eight meetings against the Jets. All right, guy, Boomer. You know, they don't remember the first four touchdowns. They just remember that last interception. Oh. And a timeout is taken by Philadelphia. With just two seconds left. Boy, why would you do that there, huh? Perhaps preventing delay of game. But just two seconds remaining in this first quarter. Well, tonight on Survivor, it is down to three tribal councils and two suspense filled hours don't miss the season finale and live reunion show that's tonight only cbs the eagles the only team in the nfl that the jets have never beaten although uh, they are not exactly the same jets and eagles over the years because this is a series that i said started back in 1973 Who picked out uh, that particular piece of tape with Boomer? I had nothing to do with interception. it. Interception. That's terrible, Rich, that you would I make had that nothing suggestion. To do with it. First down at the 43-yard line. Handoff to McCoy to the outside, looking for the marker. Worked his way out of bounds, but short of a first down as this first quarter comes to an end. McCoy goes for nine to conclude matters. Good start for the Eagles. They're up 14 nothing. We'll be back in Philadelphia after these messages. The second quarter here at the Lincoln Philadelphia sellout crowd has turned out as, as usual this week 15 of the NFL season. And the Jets are trailing the Eagles 14 nothing. Philadelphia second down and one at midfield. McCoy trying to bounce out to the left. The ball came loose, but he was down. David Harris getting to the football, but it appeared that McCoy was down. Um, perhaps now. Let's see. All right, looks like he's down to me. Now the announcement that David Harris recovered the fumble. I think the officials were late to make the call. You're going to watch McCoy wind this thing all the way back, and David Harris is there, and Bart Scott. He still has the ball. Now it gets ripped out. You can see his his whole leg was on the ground. Philadelphia this, is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. And well, watch, his left, watch his left side, and it's there, and now it comes out. So the Eagles with the challenge because on the field it was called a fumble and a jet recovery. Well, I think Philadelphia is going to come up with this football. You take a look at LaShawn McCoy here. Just keep an eye on his left knee. His left knee is going to be down right there, and he still has possession of the football. Now it comes out. You see Bart Scott trying to rip it there at the end. And, and it was David Harris, inside linebacker, who came up with the uh, ball for the Jets. The challenge flag thrown by Eagles head coach Andy Reid. It was interesting last night talking to Rex Ryan about the way LaShawn McCoy carries the football, and he says he's careless with it. He carries it outside, but then he doesn't fumble. He's not a fumbler. But certainly they're aware of it. And, they, you know, you talk about it all week, and, and you make, make that a point of emphasis in the meeting. You talk to the linebackers and about ball extraction, trying to get that ball on the ground.
And we'll hear from the referee, Cleet Blakeman. After reviewing the play, the runner's knee was down before he lost control of the ball. It'll be third down and one from the 48-yard line. Please get set the game clock to 14:58. 14:58. Philadelphia will not be charged with a timeout. So the Eagles maintain possession as you look at Andy Reid in his 13th year as head coach of the Eagles, the longest tenured head coach in the NA, in the uh, NFL, but he is on the hot seat in terms of fan and media reaction, not necessarily with the Eagles front office, although here at home with the Eagles losing five of their previous six games on the home field, he's been hearing the chant of fire Andy. It's amazing when you think about it, Marv, how many games this guy has won. And you know, it's 13 years, he's only had two losing seasons, and yet people are calling for his head here in Philadelphia. He's won more games in the NFC than any other coach in the last 10 seasons. No rhythm to that chant, the fire Andy. It just <laughs> doesn't kind of come, come out off your lips properly. Lined up in the eye formation, McCoy. Able to follow his fullback, Owen Schmidt. The thing that concerns you about this Philadelphia offense is their team speed. You talk about Macklin and Jackson. You think about a guy like LaShawn McCoy, and of course Michael Vick can be very dangerous as well when he pulls the ball down and, and runs. So that was the concern all week that the Jets talked about, controlling this offense, particularly the playmakers. Macklin and Jackson and McCoy, they can't let these guys get loose. McCoy picked up the first down. Play fake by Vic. He's being chased. Oh! Ball knocked out of his hands as he took a hit. And the ball was batted out of bounds. And let's see who touched it last. Penalty marker is down. We're going to call that on Marcus Dixon on the hit on Michael Vick. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. However, personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 94, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It is Marcus Dixon, the defensive end, and they're calling that an incomplete pass. Well, you watch Michael Vick, he almost runs himself right into this hit. Whoa. If you're Marcus Dixon, you've got to be able to lower, lower, lower the hit. This is a very similar situation to what we saw with Colt McCoy. Now you can't hit these quarterbacks up around the head. Was the hand coming forward? Yeah. They called it a forward pass. That's Doesn't matter because of the penalty, but it was, was called an incomplete pass. Yeah, that's what Rex is trying to say. He pushed with his hands. He so didn't hit him with his helmet or his shoulder. First out outside the Jet 30-yard line. McCoy in the backfield. Here's McCoy. Able to break tackles. Stopped by Dixon, picked up, picked up three. Well, you think about Michael Vick, he's susceptible to injury with his frequent scrambling and his style of play. He missed three and a half games in 2010. He's already missed three this season. I think he has to learn how to protect himself better. He's not going to last. He can't afford to keep taking these unnecessary hits. They take their toll. And as Marty Mortingway, the offensive coordinator, said, I may go to my grave without getting... That corrected. Mike Vick has to protect himself. And he really slides. Doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Second down and, and seven. Vick throwing. It is incomplete. Intended for Jason Avant. And I think he gets so caught up. You think about Michael Vick and how he plays the game, Marv. He gets so caught up in the action. He's always trying to help his team. And he, he's such a danger when he pulls the ball down. He just got to be smart. You know, if he can slide, if he can get out of bounds once in a while, he's got to realize that they, they need him for 16 games. And when you lose a guy like this for a quarter of the season every year, boy, it really hurts your playoff chances. And it has, has not been a batter season for uh, Michael Vick, taking too many hits, sacked 19 times. A lot of balls have been tipped. That's happened in the past, but probably not as frequent as we've seen it this year. Third and seven. Vick. Completes leaping catch inside the 15 by Deshaun 
Jackson. That's good for 16 and a first down. Well, you can look at Deshaun Jackson and how he runs these routes, and he concerns you with his speed. Now he's running the route against zone coverage. Revis knows he's got help inside. But boy, Deshaun Jackson, when he puts his foot in the ground and comes back, he creates instant separation. First catch for Deshaun Jackson. Darrell Rivas telling us last night he looks to plaster the receivers. That's a phrase that we have not, not heard. It means latching on to the receiver, giving no space to maneuver. And he's the man covering Deshaun Jackson. Here's Vic on the run. Vic reaches. No indication, apparently. He, let's see. It is a touchdown. Michael Vick just did well, what we cross that pylon. Yeah, we, yeah. What, what great individual effort by Michael Vick. And you know those ribs are feeling better when he's able to extend the football. Just watch this effort by Michael Vick. And you feel, you just feel his speed. And now look at him extend that ball. Wow. What an incredible play by Michael Vick. Not a lot of players can make that play. Alex Henry is on for the extra point. All right, all right. Eagles with a 21-0 lead on the Jets as Michael Vick was able to take it in from 11. Sponsored by Haynes. Look great, feel great in a Haynes undershirt with the lay flat color. Radio Shack. Radio Shack has what you need to make the holidays so right. And by National Car Rental. Go national, go like a pro. A commanding 21-0 lead for the Eagles over the Jets. Evan Michael Vick, six plays of 10 or more yards already in this uh, first half. Four on passing plays, uh, two on runs, including that touchdown, as you saw the graphic a moment ago, his first rushing touchdown of the season. It's amazing, he had nine a year ago. Antonio Cromartie running it out from deep in the end zone. Flag is tossed, and a good return by Cromartie. Taken down by Akeem Jordan. 35-yard kick return. During the return, holding, receiving team number 55. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down. Well, that sets it back off the call on Jamal Westerman. Michael Vick off to a dynamic start. Has already collected two sacks as he challenges the NFL leader, Jared Allen, of the Vikings, only a half sack behind and gunning for that Eagles franchise high 21 by Reggie White in 1987. Only 38 yards offensively thus far for the Jets. Latanian Thompson up the middle, picks up eight. Mark Sanchez, three of four. 12 yards, picked off once, sacked twice. And obviously this is not the kind of start the Jets were hoping for. And what, what Brian Schottenheimer wanted to do was come in here and run the football. Now you find yourself behind 21-0 early in the second quarter. Second out and two. Flip for Tomlinson. Try to stiff on his way to make the turn and could not. Good job by the weak side linebacker, Brian Roll. I think you're better off running right downhill at this Philadelphia defense. Where they have the speed, the athleticism, and the quickness is on the edge. And I think they're smaller inside, and they're young and inexperienced at linebacker and safety. You look where some of the big runs that the Jets had early in the first quarter, it was right in between the tackles. It remains a third down and two. Play fake, Sanchez lost it, he fumbles, and it's recovered by Joselio Hansen, the right quarterback, 
another Jet turnover. Well, there's some confusion here between Ladani and Tomlinson and Mark Sanchez. Tomlinson's going to go this way, and for some reason, Sanchez extends the ball with his left hand as he's going to fake it. Now he's confused as if he's thinking he's going to run the football. The receivers are running a, pa a pass route, and the offensive line is pass blocking. Something went wrong there for Mark Sanchez. And you look at the fumbles, and that's been a problem with Mark Sanchez. Ball security. Boy, what an awful first half for this Jets offense. And as we touched on earlier, the Jets leading the NFL. They have the dubious distinction of leading most fumbles. So here are the Eagles. First and ten in the red zone. McCoy takes the handoff, slashing his way inside the 15-yard line. Muhammad Wilkerson making the stop. It's a four-yard advance for LaShawn McCoy. And these are fun games offensively for the Eagles. I mean, every time you get the ball, you're, you're in the plus territory. And I think it changes what Andy Reid and Marty Morningway can do offensively. You can be more aggressive. You can take more shots. Philadelphia has not been successful in the red zone. Hey, on, on. Ranking 30th in the yeah, league. Yeah. Second and six. A lot of movement and a flag. Looks to be Muhammad Wilkerson of the Jets. We're seeing so many of these offenses now use a, a double cadence where they'll start the initial cadence, they'll try and set that defense, maybe even get them to jump off sides in the neutral zone. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 96. Five yard penalty, still second down. Fifth penalty, 49 yards assessed against the Jets. It was Wilkerson jumping. Well, they're just not good enough right now, Marv, to be able to overcome all the mistakes, the penalties, the turnovers. You know, the missed assignments, the mental errors right now really hurting the Jets. Second down. Second and goal at the nine. Touchdown, LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy has tied the Eagles franchise record of 18 touchdowns in a season tied with Hall of Famer Steve Van Buren who incidentally will celebrate a 91st birthday at the end of this month Alex Henry as the Eagles continue what has been an embarrassment for the Jets LaShawn McCoy, able to take it in. On CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. And by Best Buy. Find the perfect gift online or in store this holiday season at Best Buy. Well, LaShawn McCoy has equal the franchise record Steve Van Buren did it back in 1945 and did it in what was then a 10 game NFL season yeah not to take anything away from LaShawn McCoy he's had a fantastic year for the Eagles but you're right Marv Van Buren did that with just 10 games an incredible player for the Eagles in the late 40s Here's Cromarty on the return. Trying to make the cut across the 20-yard line, and he's taken down by Owen Schmidt. Picked up 24 on that return. Well, the thing you always have to guard against with a back like LaShawn McCoy is when he begins to wind it back. And I think as you watch the Jets' defense, they over-pursue. Look at the backside. David Harris gets all the way, caught all the way down the line of scrimmage. There's no one back to fill that void. A big hole on the back side of that run. Sean McCoy getting ready for that for that next series. 
Three jet turnovers leading what? to 21 Eagle points. Here's Green trying to follow the blocker. And then he is gang tackled. Six yard pickup. Well, you look at the Jets' first five possessions, I mean, this is about as ugly as it gets. You've got the turnovers, you've got a couple three and outs, and you know, you look at the scoreboard, you're behind 28-0. You know, you, you're Brian Schottenheimer in this offense. You've got to take a deep breath. You've got to take it one play at a time, one series at a time to get back in this game. Plexico Burris to the right, Santonio Holmes to the left. Second and four. Sanchez going short range, has the first down. Dustin Keller. Stopped by Asante Samuel, a 12-yard pickup for Keller, makes his first catch of the day. Eagles with touchdowns on their last three possessions. Just another nine minutes remaining first half. Green in the backfield, along with John Man. Connor. Yeah. Sanchez pumping twice and then fires downfield. Dustin Keller with the diving catch. It's a 41-yard hookup. Well, what happens is Mark Sanchez starts to his right. That pulls that middle safety out of the way, and then Dustin Keller gets the matchup, matchup on the backside, and Mark's able to slide to his left a little bit, but great extension at the end here by Dustin Keller. And you can see the linebacker right there, Brian Roll, he can't, can't keep up with Dustin Keller. Keller's been on a run the last three games. First and ten at the Philadelphia 20. Holmes, look at a whole lot of that football, picked up five, met by Samuel and Cheney. Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join JV, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Bill Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Andy Reid's team with a 28-0 cushion. Yeah. Sanchez taken down again. That's the third sack for the Eagles. This time it is Philip Hunt. Hunt, first year player out of the University of Houston. Spent well, a couple of years in the Canadian Football League. You no, know, this ball's got to come out. You just see. Mark Sanchez, they're one short. Ladanian Tomlinson gets out. There's nowhere to throw. A good coverage there by Nambi Asamoah. You look at the other side of Sante Samuel, maxed up on Plex. A little bit of a coverage sack there as well. Third out of 11, the Jets at the Eagle 22. And the Eagles call for time. 6.35 remaining. CBS, what if you could stop a crime before it happens? Well, these two heroes can. Don't miss the new hit drama, Person of Interest, Thursday only, CBS. Well, the sack really hurt him. It puts you behind in the down and distance. And the bright shot him over there it makes his job a whole lot more difficult. You come up with these third and longs against a Philadelphia defense that can bring five or six rushers in this situation. For the Jets, no question, it is their most effective drive of the, the first half. It's a long count. Sanchez's pass is broken up. Looked like and Clayton got a piece of it intended for Sean Green. You get a look at Jason Babb and how low he gets. He's trying to hide himself over there behind Colin Jenkins and let Colin Jenkins start up the field and then work back underneath. He is a handful right now for that Jets offensive line. Now Nick Falk 
coming on for a 39-yard attempt. And he puts it through, so the Jets put points on the board for the first time, and they now trail 28-3. With six to go, we saw LaShawn McCoy go into the Philadelphia Eagle record books alongside this man. We had to pull out the grainy footage. That's Steve Van Buren, who scored 18 touchdowns for the Eagles back in 1945 in a 10-game season. He had a club record 15 rushing touchdowns, two receiving TDs, and one kick return. He did it all. Played for the Eagles from 1944 to 1945. 51, a Hall of Famer. He lives outside the Philadelphia area and uh, will be celebrating a 91st birthday. Yeah, he's a legend in, in Philadelphia here. And I think about that, a 66-year-old club record for Steve Van Buren. The rookie from Pitt, Deion Lewis, comes up for a short kick to the 20. Able to break a tackle and then coughed it up. Eagles say they have it. Jets say they have it. And it will be. Philadelphia ball. Another Jet turnover. Are you going to watch Deion Lewis? I don't know if he ever feels you on the right side of your screen. You're going to see Westerman there, the linebacker. He's the one that punches it out. And then it's rolling on the ground right there. And not sure if it's Lanc Lancaster or whoever comes up with it. but Yeah, it looks to be Ellis Lancaster. Well, this, is the, this is the turnover the Jets need to get back in this game. So the Jets able to come up with that uh, that fumble on the kickoff, and Sean Green took a shot from Akeem Jordan. Just great recognition on these screens. The Eagles have done a really nice job recognizing whether it's Ladanian Tomlinson or in this case Sean Green sneaking out on these screens. They're following their keys. They're looking at. Looking at that offensive line, whether it's Nick Mangold or Matt Slauson getting out in front, they're doing a nice job trailing at the backside. Second down and ten. Sanchez off the mark, but a flag is down. Plexico Burris, the intended receiver. Covered by Asenwap. Well, Mark Sanchez throws this one early. Kind of fortunate here because Plex never gets his, his head around. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. Following place at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. You see Nandi, this is what he wants to do. Get his hands on you. And then right here is where he grabs him. And you can't do that. No, didn't get the sense there that the Plex was anticipating that ball coming out that quick for Mark Sanchez. First down at the Philadelphia 14-yard line. Five and a half remaining. First half. White 15. White. Green trying to go straight ahead. Looks like he lost a yard, met by Akeem Jordan. Well, that's that's the reason right now this team is 5-8. and eight. 33 giveaways this season, the most in the NFL. And that's driving Andy Reid absolutely crazy. You know, a lot of the criticism has been about the defense. He said, hey, forget the defense. We put the defense in so many bad situations this year by putting the ball on the ground, throwing interceptions, and not taking care of the football. Sean Green, 10 carries, 48 yards. Play fake by Sanchez, throwing end zone. 
and it is incomplete intended for Santonio Holmes but a, once again a flag is tossed holding offense 10 yard penalty still second down no uh, particular call on that, but it's on the offense. Well, keep an eye on these two right here. This should never happen. You got help on the outside. You look at Vlad Vladi Dukas. He's got to set inside, knowing that he's got help from Molik in the tight end over the top on his outside. Vladimir Dukas has to step hard down inside and not get beat across his face. Vladimir Dukas, who is listed as a backup tackle, also plays tight end. He was at the tight end position. So it's a second and 21. But penalties in the red zone absolutely killing the Jets. Here is Sanchez stepping up. He throws. Touchdown. Santonio Holmes out of post pattern. And a flag in the back of the end zone. Well, Santonio Holmes ought to know better. This is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct on him. Yeah. A little demonstration with the football in the back of the end zone. You just can't do that. And we have seen that so many times from Santonio Holmes. And it continues to cost. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Taunting. Offense number 10. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The touchdown is good. I mean, you're down. 28 to 9 what are you doing well you can't do this and then of course the demonstration with the ball and that's where they get you right there you got to be smart what a great throw though by mark sanchez he slides to his left he buys some time he fits this one in three defenders perfect throw gets it done and here is nick falk i'm assuming santonio was looking to simulate an eagle that's, that's the, I guess that's what that was. First thought in my mind. Well, you look at these end zone celebrations. I guess that's an eagle. They usually do the jet where they keep their arms out straight. That looks like a lame eagle to me. I don't. There's the jet. Let's but he should know better. Let's analyze taunts. So the Jets now trail 28 to 10. Keep your fantasy football season going with Playoff Challenge and compete against the nation for a chance to win $5,000. Sign up now at cbssports.com slash challenge. Jets with 10 points the last minute. 45, the field goal and the, the touchdown catch by Holmes, his eighth touchdown reception of the season. And the scenario for the Jets who are in a scramble with Cincinnati, Tennessee, and Oakland. Cincinnati beating St. Louis. Tennessee lost earlier today to the Colts. Think about every mistake that's magnified. Now the Jets have to kick off the 20 mark because of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And you know, when you're trailing 28-10, you know, it all it all matters. And uh, again, they're just making too many mistakes. Even when they score a touchdown. Got to be smart. Now you get the, the Eagles' good field position here based on the return with plenty of time here in the second quarter. And Deion Lewis, who coughed up that last kick return, is back deep. And this is Lewis. This time holding out of the football as he works his way to the 35-yard line. Donald Strickland on the tackle 20-yard return for Lewis and there's a difference right there I mean rather than getting the ball at the 20-yard line you, know, you fielded the ball at the 15 and you, now you advance it to the 35 I mean, that's significant good starting field position for the Eagles Michael Vick to this point four of six 97 yards and that one touchdown which was run in from 11 yards out first down from the 35. LaShawn McCoy, the running back. Play fake by Vic, and he will run. Comes up short. 
of the first down. He stopped by David Harris, picked up nine. There's not many quarterbacks that can turn about a nine-yard sack into a seven or eight-yard gain. And, and he does it, seems like, time and time again. He's so elusive. He's so hard to corral in the pocket. Vic returning last week against Miami. Missed three games with fractured ribs. He keeps saying he will change his running style, but we have not seen that as McCoy has the first down. Well, he, we, we visited with him on Friday. He said he's sleep deprived. You know, he had a difficult time getting comfortable even laying down at night. There's not a lot you can do for sore ribs. They ice, they use a bone stem, a heat pack. He's, he actually has a hyperbaric chamber at the house. And he's been in that a couple hours a night. What, it, is that, what does that do? Well, it brings more oxygen into the system, which promotes healing. I'm not a doctor, Marv, although I play one on television. But, and, then he, and then he's been getting injections before the game. I mean, that's a painful injury to play with as a quarterback. First out of the 45, McCoy. McCoy breaking tackles. And the ball comes loose, picked up by Rodney Poole. Rodney Poole on the return off the fumble. Deshaun Jackson makes the tackle, was able to catch him from behind. It's a 33-yard return. What a wild first half. What a great effort. You're going to see, I think it's DeVito that gets his hand in here. He chases this thing all the way down. He's able to pop it out. We talked about how McCoy has not put the ball on the ground. He's done it a couple times already here today. And now the Jets coming up with some takeaways. Rodney Poole is starting for the injured Jim Leonard, starting at strong safety. Seven-year man out of Oklahoma. And Deshaun Jackson, who chased down Poole, is shaking up first and ten for the Jets at the Eagle 27. Sanchez eluding the sack, throwing end zone, and it is broken up. Kurt Coleman, the strong safety, batting it away from Plexico Burris. And Rich, that uh, one of those jump balls thrown by Sanchez for Burris. Well, these are the ones I talk about that he needs to eliminate the two or three poor decisions. And you just can't make this throw late down the middle. You see the safety right there to make the play. Kurt Coleman, very fortunate that that's not picked off. Well, that was a scary throw by Mark Sanchez. A real nice effort there by Plexico Barris knocking it away. Tomlinson on the backfield with three minutes to play in the first half. Hand off to the fullback, Connor. He goes for seven. Jamar Chaney, the middle linebacker, on the tackle of John Connor, who's been nicknamed the Terminator. Become a favorite of Rex Ryan and the coaching staff because of his Powerful blocks, has not carried the ball much, only his 13th run of the season. But here are the Jets looking to get back into it after trailing 28-0. Third down and three. A lot of different looks by that Philly defense. You can see Babbitt and Cole moving around pre-snap. Sanchez able to angle it, fighting Curley. And he has a first down inside the 15, a six-yard hookup. Coleman and Hanson combined to make the tackle for the Eagles. And that brings us to two minutes remaining first half. Two minutes remaining first half. It has not been pretty. A total of six turnovers for the Jets and the Eagles. 28 points scored off turnovers. Ten total penalties have been called three turnovers apiece and the Jets have a first down at the Philadelphia 14-yard line and with the movement the flags come flying false start offense number 68 five-yard penalty still first down the left guard Matt Slauson is it me or is it just every time the Jets get in the red zone they have a penalty it seemed like they come early in the sequence on first down. Rich, the Jets had scored touchdowns coming into today on the last 12 red zone possessions. Today it's been interception, field goal, and then touchdown. 
Now first what a and 15. Fake handoff. Sanchez incomplete. Dustin Keller double covered. Yeah, they're very aware of Dustin Keller in this part of the field. If you, if you track Mark Sanchez's throws, he's got a lot of comfort and familiarity throwing the ball to the tight end. And so you're going to see some bracket coverage where they use a linebacker and a safety or even Nambi Asamoah in another corner covering the tight end down the middle of the field. Burris to the right, top of your screen, and Holmes left. Tomlinson in the backfield. Sanchez being chased. And complete short of the first down is a diving Santonio Holmes. Short pickup about three on the on the pass. Well, two things there. I think Santonio Holmes could have helped Mark Sanchez by throttling it down some. He's coming full speed across the field. It's a difficult throw for Mark. Mark's trying to stop him in the hole. So third and 12 for the Jets with a minute 20 left in this first half. Sanchez steps it up, swings it, Tomlinson to the 10. That's a six-yard hookup, Casey Matthews on the tackle. He did not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to run. We're going to have to start helping Wayne Hunter, the right tackle. I mean... Jason Babbins just running right around the edge, and Mark Sanchez doesn't step up there. He doesn't get that one off. Mark Sanchez is doing a really nice job stepping up inside the pocket. He talked to us about that on Friday. So it is a fourth down. As Philadelphia uses its final timeout, a 28-yard field goal attempt. Upcoming and coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, J.B. Dan, Shannon Boomer, and Coach Bill Cowher will have all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Nick Falk earlier hit from 39. He was in the midst of a streak coming into today. Missing five of ten, but three of those were from 50-plus. This is a 28-yard attempt. And it is good. So 13 straight points for the Jets after trailing 28-nothing. You mentioned all the turnovers in the first half. Mar, there's been six and... I think some of these backs, a guy like LaShawn McCoy, they need to go out and get some stick them. I know it's not legal anymore, but uh, boy, they're putting the ball on the ground, and this is a guy that's been really good at not doing that, taking care of the football. But Rex Ryan told us last night as they studied the tape, saw a lot of examples where that ball gets away from his frame. He gets it out away from his body, and they've been working all week about getting it on the ground. Do the officials actually check prior to the game for stick em? They do. They actually look at the, uh, the, the they have a list of players that random players will probably pick six or eight players and they check really prior to leaving the locker room of course they never checked me but then they they'll, they'll do the pat down they'll do the pat down on the players particularly offensive linemen and defensive linemen see if they put any some, type of, some spray on their sleeves and jerseys so that you can't grab and the players always looking for an edge why would a quarterback be not not on your hands you wouldn't want to stick them no but you know i've used it in the past when it when we played in bad weather and in inclement weather where you've got some rain where you'd right. put it on your towel and you'd, you'd keep touching your hand towel so that you could get a little bit of that stick them on there it was made, made it a little bit easier to grip the football of course you remember players like fred blitnikoff of the oakland raiders geez they put it all down their socks a few kids out there good tips here on stick them <laughs> from rich gannon <laughs> Short kick played by Deion Lewis. Christmas Day, the NFL holiday spectacular and the magic of NFL films puts you in the spirit. 
with the most memorable holiday moments, plus experience the historical journey of African Americans in pro football on third and long. Philadelphia leading 28 to nothing, about halfway, well, 627 of the second quarter. And the Jets have come back with the 13 straight points. That was an interesting flip attempted for Brent Selleck. Would you describe this, Rich? Well, this is a smart play by Michael Vick. Why? He's trying to shovel. He's trying to have the shovel pass to LaShawn McCoy, and he, he actually protects him by just kicking that one away. So it's, a, uh, it's an incomplete pass. Michael Vick knows the rules there. He doesn't have the shovel pass to McCoy, so he does the next best thing and just throws it away. 37 seconds left in this first half. Now Vick completes right at the line, and then McCoy is shoved back. We'll get a yard on the play. Donald Strickland with the tackle. Verbal exchange between Jets and, and Eagles. Like Bart Scott right in the uh, in the center of it all. Yeah, you can look at that the interior of that Philadelphia offensive line. They're young with Kelsey and Watkins, but these two have played hard. They've gotten better. They've become more consistent in there. And the one thing, you, as you study the tape, these guys will get after you. They do compete. Jets take a timeout. It is their first timeout a look at the AFC playoff picture the situation for the Jets they are in that scramble with Cincinnati Tennessee and and Oakland Tennessee losing to Indianapolis Colts finally coming up with a win Pittsburgh with a Tennessee loss clinching a playoff spot Cincinnati beating uh, St. Louis earlier Oakland at the moment in front of Detroit but the Jets firmly believe they have to win out for that wild card slot. Vic able to complete to Jeremy Macklin, three-year man out of Missouri. That's a 23-yard pickup there, quickly to the line with just 15 seconds remaining in this first half. Officially 16 as Vic stops the clock with the spike. And a big-time throw there to Jackson. Now they've Got a chance here to take another shot at still maybe clock it one more time if they can't get out of bounds and get that field goal team on the field. Well, for Alex Henry to come on, they probably, in terms of his range, have to get to about the 30. We're good. Second and 10. Eagles out there, 44. Out of time. The completion to the tight end, Brent Sonic, has a first down. Eagles out of timeouts. Clock running. We got one more. We got one more play here. Once again, able to put it on the ground. Stops the clock with two seconds left. Well, this would be a long kick. This almost be about a 60-yard kick. If in fact they try and kick it, I think they're going to take a shot down the field. Try to. I throw this one in the end zone, and a quarterback like Michael Vick has plenty of arm to get the ball there. His career long, Alex Henry, 47. He's back in early November against the Bears, so uh, this will be, as you mentioned, an attempt to just fire it on a Hail Mary. I don't know if Vick has the arm, particularly from there, no. The catch is not made leaping attempt would have been an intercept and they and apparently they're calling it an interception david harris able to come up with it and then stepped out of bounds and uh, dropped the football but he'll get credit 28 13 the score philadelphia at the end of the first half we'll be back with the sprint halftime report after this message and a word from your staff four for the eagles three for the Jets. When you think of the critical nature of this football game, they're really a sloppy first half. They've got to get it straightened out. Turning the ball, turnovers have been absolutely critical for both teams. Now let's take a look at the first half statistics and turnovers certainly highlighted. Hey, look at that. 31 points off of seven turnovers in the first half. 
for both of these teams. I don't remember a game ever where I've seen seven turnovers. I'd probably go back to when I was playing, Marv, seven turnovers in the first half. But that's that's incredible. You think about what's at stake for the Jets and Eagles in this one. And Mark Sanchez actually did some good things in the first half. 11 of 15 with a touchdown. He did have the one interception. And he's got to settle that group down and have him play better here in the second half. Jets receiving. This is Antonio Cromarty on the return. For Antonio Cromarty is taken out of bounds by the kicker, the rookie Alex Henry. He goes 42 yards on the kick return. Well, you can talk about a, a live ball on the punt. It hits Curtis Marsh. Ellis Langster there to make the play. And miserable first hit, first quarter for Santonio Holmes with a fumble and a tip ball. And Mark Sanchez comes right back. He fumbles on a broken play. And then LaShawn McCoy was sloppy with the ball in the second quarter. As I mentioned, the seven turnovers have resulted in 31 points scored in the first half. Excellent field position for the Jets. First down at their 42. Sean Green reaching out to the 44-yard line. Sanchez in the first half, 11 of 15, 110 yards. One touchdown, one interception, and Green, 10 carries on 48 yards. No catches for Plexico Burris. After falling behind 28-0, the Jets were able to score 13 points, and that's important because now I think they can get back into their base game plan, and that's running the football here early in the third quarter. Once again, it is Green looking deeper into the statistics as Green goes for three. Sanchez looking for Burris on only two occasions. As a member of the Giants, Burris has had some huge days here against the Eagles in Philadelphia. And I think he gets your attention, Marv, in the red zone, you know, where he can use that size and that leaping ability, and that's what the Eagles have been talking about all week. I don't know that they're overly concerned with him on the early downs. He's not made a lot of big explosive plays down the field. Where he shows up and hurts you is in the red zone. Third down and five. It's Curly in motion out in the slot. Sanchez completes for the first down. Jeremy Curley, fifth round draft pick out of Texas. Christian stopped by the free safety, Nate Allen, and he picks up 10. Well, uh, Curley can really hurt you in the slot because he's got good quickness. You see right there, starts, starts. Hands it up the field, puts his foot in the ground, and comes right back underneath. And I like the fact that the ball is coming out of Mark Sanchez's hands quickly. I know you work with uh, Sanchez. You were called in by the Jets to spend some time with him a couple of years back. What do you see now that you did not see at that time? Well, I can't take any credit for the interception tomorrow. Let me just go on record <laughs> as saying that. But You start with the negative. All right, green. <laughs> The ball carrier. I've seen a lot of improvement with Mark Sanchez, and I think there's a couple areas that I think one and, and most importantly in talking to the coaching staff is preparation. And he knows what it takes to get ready for a season and for a game, and not just physically but mentally. I think this is where he's really improved. I think he's got a better understanding of protections. He's doing more at the line of scrimmage with the running game. And the big thing is just taking care of the football. He's got to realize what he has around him. Second down and eight at the Philadelphia 41. Sanchez taken down from behind inside the 40 by Jaquay Parker. Well, Sanchez has plenty of time initially, and he's stepping up like he's been told to do all week. You can see Parker, he never gives up on the play. Mark, fortunate there to get that other hand on the ball, not, not let it come out. But they've got to help. You look at the Jets' offensive line, they've got to help Wayne Hunter. He is really struggling on the right side. Jets looking at a third and six at the Eagles' 39. Again, the pressure. Sanchez off the mark that time intended for Burris, who was covered by the strong safety, Kurt Coleman. And Sanchez is hurt. I've been talking about the right side of that offensive line, and they, they've got to help Wayne Hunter. 
You watch. He's going to start him upfield. Now he comes right back underneath. Wayne Hunter's just doing everything he can to grab. How does Mark Sanchez get hurt there? Uh, Jason Babin yeah, took him down. Third punt of the day for TJ Conley. Good hang time. Chad Hall makes the fair catch. 27-yard punt, but Philadelphia will start deep in their territory. And Mark Brunel will begin to warm up. Taking out Mark Sanchez, who was hunched over after taking that hit from the defensive end, Jason Babin. So the Eagles back to the offense from their 11. LaShawn McCoy... Lost the yard on the play, met by Muhammad Wilkerson. We went back and we went back and looked at it a couple times, and it's hard to tell. Now, initially, you can see Jason Babin. He comes in, he hits him right across the side of his face, right there. But it wasn't as if Jason was going full speed. Then he pulls off. Mark looks like he's pretty good there. Then all of a sudden, you see him fall down. And when we initially saw him on the sidelines, it looked like he had some discomfort. I think he's. Having a hard time feeling his right hand. Second and 11 for Vic and the Eagles. He is in trouble, able to elude it, and completes out across the 25 to Clay Harbor, the backup tight end. Only his 10th catch of the season. Calvin Pace in pursuit of Vic, who was able to escape, and it's a 16-yard pass play. you got to cover all day if you're playing against Michael Vick because he runs around, he buys himself some extra time, and that's tough. That's really tough on David Harris to be able to cover a guy like Clay Harbor for six or seven seconds while Michael Vick is running around in the backfield. First and ten from the Philadelphia 26-yard line. Five minutes gone by in this third quarter. Vick off the pump, wide open at midfield, Brent Sullivan. Down to the 20, 10, 5, hits the pylon. No indication. Still no indication. And apparently they say he was out at the 1. A 73-yard pass play, Sullivan. Taken down by Brodney Poole. First and goal from the one. Well, Brent Selleck has had an outstanding year. He leads a team with 49 receptions. When you get him matched up on these linebackers and a safety like Eric Smith, he's going to win that battle. And he's a tough man to bring down in the open field. Four catches, 151 yards off that last reception for 73. First and goal at the one-yard line. Here is McCoy. And he is stopped at the line by Bart Scott. LaShawn McCoy going for the franchise record-breaking 19th touchdown. There are a lot of off-tackle plays with LaShawn McCoy today. And you know, he's, he's a smaller back, and you lose him a little bit behind that big offensive line. He's so shifty. 5'11", 205 pounds. Lined up in the eye. Again, the handoff to McCoy, and he is in. Touchdown! Sean McCoy with his 19th touchdown of the season. And he is now number one in the Eagles' Record book passing by Hall of Famer Steve Van Buren. Well, here's another one that's had an outstanding season. You forget about how well this guy has played. You look at the Eagles' record at five and eight, but second leading rusher in football right now, and been very good in the passing game as well. And just kept to keep finding ways to get LaShawn McCoy the ball. Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. The new film, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, in theaters everywhere December 21st, rated PG-13. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. 
What a year it has been for LaShawn McCoy, averaging close to five yards per carry. Scored his 19th touchdown of the season. That is tops in franchise history. Second of the day for McCoy. Alex Henry kicking it away to Antonio Cromarty. Cromarty able to move it across the 20-yard line, goes for 23, and apparently Mark Sanchez, who was shaken up in that last series, is all right. We saw the backup, Mark Brunel, who's come in at left corner for Asante Samuel, who we are told with a hamstring injury is questionable to return. Mark Sanchez is back. And off to Sean Green. Gets to the 25, bet by Kurt Coleman, the strong safety, and Deshaun Jackson hurt his elbow earlier. He is questionable in terms of his return. Yeah, you look at Asani Samuel not playing here now in the second half, and Marv, if I'm the, the Jets, I'm going to go after Dominique rogers Camardi. I'm going to take, take a shot and find out where he's at, maybe double move him early here in the third quarter. Second down and seven. Sanchez over the middle. It is dropped by Green. Well, obviously, Sean Green's got to make that catch. The other thing is, is Mark Sanchez can slow down just a little bit. He rushes this. Give him some time. See, he doesn't have his, hand, his head around. The, the back has to see the ball come out of the quarterback's hands. Mark rushed that one just a tad. Third down and seven, Ladanian Tomlinson checking in. And flags come flying to stop play. Looks to be the right tackle, Wayne Hunter. False start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, still third down. It is on... On Hunter in his eighth year out of University of Hawaii. That ties the season high for the penalties already. Nine of, for 84 yards. They're going to have to start helping Wayne Hunter by chipping with the back or putting a tight end over there to give him some presence because right now uh, he's struggling a little bit in pass protection. Ball back at the 20. It's a third down and 12. Sanchez taken down. It is Jason Fabin with his third of the day. That's 18 for the season. Well, you see Babin, he's here, and then he's going to come around. They come back down with the end, and Wayne Hunter gets locked in, and the guard, they don't pass it off. So you look at the right guard, Brandon Moore. He's trying to pass it off to Wayne Hunter, but Wayne Hunter gets sucked all the way down. Not a good job on the right side of that offensive line. Conley with the punt. Chad Hall makes the fair catch. 40-yard punt. He now leads the NFL in sacks. Jason Babin in his eighth year out of Western Michigan. CBS is sponsored by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Eagles have a 35-13 lead on the Jets. 35 points, most points scored by Philadelphia this season, doing it against a defense that was ranked sixth in the NFL. Coming in, Eagles with 17 first downs, only one punt. The one problem has been turnovers as Vic throws at a diving catch. Made at the 35-yard line by Jeremy Macklin. That's good for 18 and a first down. Well, one of the problems the Jets had this week was trying to find somebody to play Michael Vick. And that man right there, Isaiah Trufant, although he plays defense, he came in and he ran around and pretended as if he was Michael Vick. You're not going to get Mark Brunel, although he's left-handed, to duplicate what Michael Vick can do with his legs. Well, they wanted a smaller, and that uh, certainly fits the profile of Trufant at 5'8", and a speedy guy. 
All right, here is Vic to the sideline. And another first down. This time it's Riley Cooper breaking tackles. Riley Cooper, who was Tim Tebow's roommate at the University of Florida, fifth round pick last year, making the catch, bumped out by Calvin Pace. Well, the, pr the problem is, is that Isaiah Trufant was spending more time on offense this week and not enough on defense, but we, we talked about the differences. You see on the top of your screen, look how far off he's playing Riley Cooper, and you just can't give him that much cushion. So Pace coming over to help out, but it's an 18-yard pass play, first catch of the day for Cooper, another first down for the Eagles. Coming up on six minutes left here in the third. McCoy getting to the edge, not able to make the turn. The angle cut off by Eric Smith. And here's why they used Isaiah Trufant. You look at the, the speed, 4-3-2-40 time and that vertical jump and the quickness. That's what they were trying to assimilate in practice, and they just didn't have somebody that could come in and run around like Michael Vick. They worked on the scramble drill. They worked on trying to contain him. That was the big concern that Rex, Ryan, and Mike Pettin had this week about keeping Vic Michael, controlled Michael. in the pocket. Michael. And as it turns out, Michael Vick has had one of his better games here today against the Jets. Second out and, and seven. And Vic able to hang on. You just, you just jinxed him, Marv. You were talking about him having a great day. This gets a little antsy here. and Look at those hands separate a little bit. You got a young center up in there, Jason Kelsey. When he's got a reach to his right, you've really got to you got to stay in there. Lost a couple on that play. Vic in the second half has gone four for four, 125 yards. It's a third and nine for the Eagles. The ball at the Jet, 16, and a timeout is called by Philadelphia. Coming up on. Five minutes to play. 19. We'll get that ball painted up and we'll put that in a trophy case. I don't know if it'll be in his trophy case or maybe in the Eagles trophy case, but nice little memento. Third down and nine as we resume with the Jet. 16-yard line. Pressure on Vic. Gets it off. Sonic. Tough to bring down. Gets inside the 10-yard line. Stopped by Donald Strickland. Brent Selick grew up. In Cincinnati, attended the University of Cincinnati, a Bengals fan. In fact, his parents have 10 season tickets for the Bengals. And he said his favorite player of all time, a fellow by the name of Boomer Esiason, as you look at the terrific day that Brent Selleck has, has had. It's a 28-yard attempt. So Chaz, rather Alex Henry puts it right through. Right here, we'll step away for an NFL Today update, JV and Coach Bill Cowan. Patriots precision. Yeah, eight plays, 85 yards. Danny Woodhead, 10 yards out, puts him up 34-16. It's entering almost a fourth quarter. It's Tebow time. Is this deficit too big to overcome? Marv Albert and Rich Gannon. All right, guys, and back in Philadelphia, the Eagles now have a 38-13 lead on the Jets. A little chiropractic work on Mark Sanchez. Trying to work out that kink in the right side of his neck. That's why he was grabbing at his right arm and his right hand. It, it'll go numb. You get a good, get that bent a certain way, and all of a sudden you get a little tingling in, that, in your fingers. It's very difficult to grip and throw the football. Now the Jets are going with Joe McKnight on the kickoff return for the first time today. It had been Antonio from Marty. McKnight sat out last week with an injured elbow. He's averaging 32 yards a return, which leads the NFL. they got to pick things up offensively. Mark Sanchez and this, this offense, they've got to get in and out of the huddle. they got to get more plays run here in the second half to get ready to get it. Get into the fourth quarter here in about four minutes. They've got, they've got to get the tempo. The tempo has to pick up. Schottenheimer's got to get the plays in earlier. Mark's got to get the line of scrimmage. Maybe even go no huddle. 
Behind 38-13, you got a lot of work, a lot of ground to make up here. Alex Henry's kick over the head of McKnight, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Well, you can vote to send your favorite players to the 2012 Pro Bowl in Hawaii. Vote online or with your mobile device at nfl.com slash pro bowl or text pro bowl to my nfl that is six nine six three five and balloting closes on monday night mark sanchez in the second half just one of three ten yards it's been a hard game to get in rhythm if you're mark sanchez but there's been so many turnovers it's that put together a lot of eight ten twelve play drives Running back is Green. Deep drop by Sanchez being chased. He's able to get it away incomplete. This time Jaquay Parker putting the pressure on. Yeah, a lot of pressure. A lot of it's come from this guy right here, Jason Babin. He comes off the left side. He's going to beat Wayne Hunter early. And then he moved him around. You see him peeling back and sneaking through the middle of that Jets offensive line. And again, working off the right side. Really not doing a good job passing it off when you look at the right side of that Jets offensive line. Then they're struggling a little bit now. Jason Babin trying to talk to Jim Washburn to get back on the field. Ten player in NFL history with three or more sacks consecutive games. And that is picked off out of the flexion. Jamar Cheney. It was tipped by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. And Cheney comes up with his third interception of the season. Well, just throwing a slant route up top and see Cromartie, he jumps it. He recognizes the slant all the way. He's got his eyes in the backfield and he's the one that gets his hands on it first. And right there, when those balls get deflected, they never land in, from a quarterback's perspective, it never lands in the, in the right guy's hands. You see a good look at Juan Castillo over there. That, this defense has done a really nice job taking the ball away. Good look at Cheney who came up with it. A pass intended for Santonio Holmes. First and ten for the Eagles at the Jet 26. Vic completing underneath. And a flag is thrown. It was Clay Harbor making the catch. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 69, late hit to the pile. It's going to be 15 yards, it'll be second down. That's the left guard, Evan Mathis. Well, you see the catch, now Evan Mathis is going to try and help his buddy, but right there you got to be smart. And that's just not being smart. The fine line between good hustle, good effort, running down the field to try and get an extra block, and, but also being smart, particularly in that part of the field. The ball is back at the 37 for a second down and 21. Vic out of the shotgun formation. Goes to the screen, and McCoy made the catch, but he is stopped, stopped by David Harris. I mean, Michael Vick would have been better off just throwing it away there, trying to get the screen dialed up. It took a while to develop, and... David Harris, he sniffed it out. End see result, it's a loss of, of six. See the frustration from Michael Vick. He knows they're getting ready to go in and score. Now they they got a third and 27. Hopefully pick up eight or ten yards and give your kicker a chance to make a play. You get a good look at Deshaun Jackson back on the field. That elbow must be all right now. It's been kind of quiet. Only one catch thus far for Jackson. Vic, that's catch number two. And uh, I should say that's uh, Macklin on the, on the reception. Jeremy Macklin for 22 yards. That was a big throw by Michael Vick. And you're going to see a little dagger route where 
Deshaun Jackson Illegal clears it out. Macklin comes back right underneath. Offense, number 10. The player never got set from the huddle. And a penalty. flag is called on Deshaun Jackson. Well, it's a mental error. This should never happen between two veteran receivers. Somebody had to be off. Some, somebody had to be on the line of scrimmage, and somebody had to be off. Sets it back to a third down and 32. And they're going the wrong direction. <laughs> Coming up on two minutes to play in the third. Philadelphia jumping in front, 28-0. Jets came back with 10 straight points. And Vic fires it. Ball is caught at the... 37 by Jackson. That's why Michael Vick is so elusive, so slippery. And just when you think you, you, you got a chance to get him on the ground, he shuffles to his right or left and throws one of those darts. So Jackson makes his second catch. And it's a fourth down punting situation. Chaz Henry. Getting set for his second punt of the day. Jeremy Curley is back at his 10. Fair catch, call for him, and he lets it go. It takes a good hop for the Eagles. You see the flag come flying in. Call from Cleet Blakeman. It's an officiating crew with some uh, good genes. Jeff Seaman, son of Jerry Seaman, longtime referee, longtime supervisor of officials, and Tony Viteri Jr. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Return team number 11. The players signal for a fair catch and then blocked. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down, New York. I thought I saw that fair catch. Signal. Time for an NFL Today update. Let's go to JV and Bill Keller. An opportunistic Raiders score. They had Detroit trying to mount a comeback in the fourth quarter, but Tommy Kelly's going to get in, sack the quarterback, cause the fumble. Aaron Curry's going to pick it up. And now the Detroit Lions trail the Oakland Raiders 27-14. With 7.32 remain in regulation. Back to Marr and Rich. It's an important game for... For both clubs, Jets have to start out from their four off that penalty call. Sean Green stopped at the line. And the Eagles have certainly been able to control Sean Green. Important particularly in the early stages before things got out of hand because... Well, that was the big concern that this Philadelphia defense had. Can they hold up? Can that front seven hold up and stop the run? And now you've got them... You're up 38-13, Juan Castillo. It's a different game now. The Jets have to start throwing the football, and this plays right to the strength of what this Eagles defense does, and that's rush the passer. Second out and 10. Play action. Sanchez in trouble in the end zone, and <laughs> throws it away. Look at the uh, AFC playoff rundown as far as the Jets are concerned. They are involved in that uh, scramble with Cincinnati and Tennessee and at Oakland. Tennessee losing earlier to the Colts. Cincinnati beating St. Louis. All vying for a wild card. Third down play. It is incomplete. Intended for Dustin Keller. Well, some communication issues here. And, you know, Mark Sanchez looks a little bit, a little bit, a little bit quick with some of his decisions. He's trying to throw this one to Dustin Keller. Dustin Keller doesn't have his head around, and by the time he has gets his head around, it's too late. And I always say that the tight ends, the backs over the ball, they've got to see that ball come out of the hands of the quarterback. A lot of, a lot of bodies right in front of them. Conley kicking from deep in his end zone, and Chad Hall on the return. Wrapped up 
Just inside the 40 by Ellis Langster. 40-yard punt, six-yard return. Well, this holiday season, all of us at uh, CBS, thank you for making CBS America's most watched network. Now to 20 seconds remaining in this uh, third quarter, and the Eagles start out at the Jet 39. 38 points for Philadelphia, the most scored against the Jets this season. LaShawn McCoy able to break tackles. Eric Smith, the free safety, with the stop. Six yards gained by McCoy. And that will do it for this third quarter so after three here in Philadelphia the Eagles at one point led 28 to nothing Jets came back with 13 consecutive points but the Eagles with a big third quarter now lead at 38 13 Vic in trouble Vic cuts back the other way and Vic just fires one just looking to get rid of it. Backlund was in the area. Well, he's exhausted. Look at it. He's <laughs> right. And those ribs are still tender now. Remember that. And this is where he's got to be smart. Why not just throw it away earlier and not run around for 40 or 50 yards and take a hit? I mean, he's such a great athlete. It's not there. All right, now you move to your left. All right, now throw it away. Now he's trying to make something happen. Watch what happens here at the end. You can, they take that hit. You talk about not taking the unnecessary hits. He's not the biggest guy. You look at that, he's been sacked. He hasn't been sacked, but he's been hurried seven times and knocked down three times. The hits, the hurries, and the knockdowns take their toll just as much as those sacks over the course of the season. Jamal Westerman with the uh, hit. There's McCoy. Beautiful cutback. McCoy. Touchdown. Jeremy Macklin with a terrific walk. And LaShawn McCoy goes 33 yards for his third touchdown of the day. And that is now 20 for the season. He leads the NFL. He already passed by Steve Van Buren as the all-time leader of that department yeah, Bart for a single Scott. season. Yeah, Bart Scott right in the hole. And he's trying to make the make the stop and LaShawn McCoy wides that thing all the way backside got some help downfield from Deshaun Jackson it's a big time run from LaShawn McCoy 20 seconds into the fourth quarter LaShawn McCoy with his third touchdown of the day and it is now a 45 13 blowout for the Eagles over the Jets. Once again, Joe McKnight is back for the Jets. The kickoff by Henry. Knight across the 20, and he's hauled down across the 30 yard line. It's a 29 yard return. LaShawn McCoy ties a career high with his third rushing. Touchdown. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Turn here. Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossover. And by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. First and ten for the Jets at the... 30-yard line that is not a happy-looking group on the Jets' sideline. Tomlinson is in the backfield. Sanchez, 12 for 22, 129 yards. Tomlinson picks up a yard on the play. For those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS and the game between the Jets 
and the Eagles 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game except on the West Coast where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time Here's Sanchez with the screen not much there he hits Tomlinson for just a yard Rich Sanchez's last seven attempts He's had five incompletions, one interception. Yeah, you just get the sense that he's never gotten a chance to really get in rhythm. And you look at the, even the screens. The Eagles' defense has done a really nice job defending the screen game. Usually an easy completion, usually a positive play. It's a very good screen team. They haven't even been able to get that done today. Third down at eight. And Sanchez way off. Three and out. And the punting unit back on. Philadelphia Eagles coming into today in a situation similar to the Jets where they have to win out to go 8-8 eight and eight and then have a shot to make the wild card. Even have a shot to win the NFC East. Chad Hall on the return. Reaching out to the 23, a 55-yard punt. And uh, we might see Vince Young coming on here for Michael Vick. There's Young taking the field. Central. Good day for that man. Michael Vick, 15 of 22, 274 yards in all. And now Vince Young takes over at quarterback. Ronnie Brown, the ball carrier. Michael Vick had a busy day and got it started running around a little bit, making some plays with his legs and driving this Jets defense absolutely crazy. The big throw to Brent Selleck. He takes a big hit there. And, and of course, his first rushing touchdown of the year, an 11-yard run, and great effort there at the end, extending the ball. Now you just go over there and you get a couple Parkers and you sit down on that warm bench area and you get a chance to watch Vince Young. Uh, here is Deion Lewis, rookie out of uh, Pitt, goes for three, and we're set for another update, JB, and Coach Bill Cowan. No quit in Denver. Yeah, down 18 in the fourth quarter, Tim Tebow takes this one out from two yards, cuts it to 11, but New England responded with a long drive, about to go in right now with four minutes to go in the game. Back to Marv and Rich. Not over till it's over in Denver with Tim Tebow. Yeah. Eagles have a third down and five. Young working out of the shotgun. And Young is taken down and lost the football. Question is, was he down? Apparently he was Evan Mathis able to get to it. It's a loss on the play, so... They will punt it away. Vince Young, who took over when Michael Vick was out with the, the rib problem, is in the game when Eagles beat the Giants and then lost the next two. So Jeremy Curley is back for this punt from Chaz Henry. Henry from the 10. Short punt. And Curley takes a hit, goes down as he crossed midfield. Just a 31-yard punt. So one of the stars for the Eagles today has been LaShawn McCoy. 18 carries, 102 yards rushing, three touchdowns. And, you know, he starts up inside, very patient today, setting those linebackers. And, of course, quick moves behind the line of scrimmage. He winds this one all the way back for his third rushing touchdown of the day. And, just an incredible effort from him, and look at that, 5.7 a carry. Well, the Jets uh, did not do a very good job Lucky. wrapping Lucky. him up around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Lucky, Lucky. 180. 180. Sean Green up the middle across the 40-yard line, picked up eight on the play as we come up on 11 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter and Lincoln Financial Field emptying out no booing at all throughout the afternoon because the Eagles jumped in front early 
And it has been all Philadelphia, certainly one of their best efforts of the season. A penalty marker is down. The other strong performance against Dallas. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, still second down. It's on the tight end, Dustin Keller. So we're headed to another update. Here's JB and Bill Cowan. It's tight in Oakland. Yeah, O'Carrera is trying to hold on. It's right here, Matthew Stafford, his third touchdown of the day. This one to Titus Young, 27-21. Oakland trying to maybe possibly get first place in the AFC West. Two minutes left in regulation. Back tomorrow. And Rich. 180. It's a wild situation in the AFC West. Sanchez this time has the time and finds Keller for a first down and some additional yardage. Brian Roll, the weak side linebacker, makes the stop. 20-yard gain. Well, this is good work for Mark Sanchez and this Jets offense. There's no huddle and it gives Mark a chance to call a little more of the plays at the line of scrimmage. Some of the things that he likes, some of the things he feels comfortable with. Go, go! Sandler, 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 sit up! Back to the ground and Green finding a hole on the right side goes for five. Philip Hunt made the tackle. You don't get the sense that they've really deviated a whole lot from their normal game plan. You don't see a lot of three and four wide receiver sets. They're still in the regular personnel. They got the fullback and the running back and then the tight end. They might open it up more here in the second half. Sanchez pass floats incomplete. And again a flag down. The pass intended for the fullback, John Connor. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 93. Blow to the head of the quarterback. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Well, he's called it on Jason Babin. I think he comes in with that hand and slaps him right across the face mask. And the officials will call that all the time. I don't know if it's a finable offense, but it certainly costs you some yardage. Jason Babin has had a spectacular day. But that leads to a first and goal. Move, 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 move. Sanchez throwing end zone, a timing pattern, diving attempt by Burris, not able to get to it. Well, it was a heck of a catch by Plex, but he's out of bounds. See working against Nambi Asamoah, two veterans. Mark gets this out of his hands quickly, and what a great effort. I don't know. Take a closer look at that. Look at that extension. Yeah, I think he's I think he's out of bounds. It will be challenged. Did not appear from our angle to be in bounds. Ruled an incomplete pass. Did not get the two feet down. Still, though, not a lot of players can make that play. It's challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. So as they check it out, 940 remaining in this fourth quarter. We'll be back to Philadelphia in a moment. Jewelry stores and by BP. They are still checking out that catch by Plexico Burris. For me, at, the, at first look, it appeared that he was not in bounds. It was called incomplete on the field, but you take another look at it, Rich. What do you think? Yeah, look at that, that left knee, and the left knee comes down, and he maintains possession of it. I think he might, I think he might get this one. After review of the play, the receiver gained control of the ball. His left knee came down in the end zone. Therefore, by rule, it is a touchdown. Oh. New York is not charged a timeout. However, they are out of challenges for the rest of the game. Good challenge, for obviously, for Rex Ryder. That's the first catch of the day 
for Plexico Burris, and it is a touchdown. So he has 38 receptions on the season, and eight of the 38 have been touchdowns. Yeah, and a lot of the other ones, Marv, I'm sure, have been in this part of the field, and now you see him going for the two-point conversion. But it's just a great individual effort by Plex and a good throw by Mark Sanchez. The running back, Sean Green, to the right of Mark Sanchez. Go! Is incomplete. You could hear Sanchez saying, get back, get back. Intended for Jeremy Curley. So they are not able to connect on the uh, two-point conversion. Well, this one came out hot, and I think if he could just take a little bit off it, this one's hard to catch for Curley. Look at this. This is a fastball, but still you got to find a way to come down with it. But that got on Curley rather quickly. Philadelphia with a 45-19 lead over the Jets. Now, if the Eagles win today, the Jets, and that is the likely outcome, uh, the Jets looking ahead have the Giants at MetLife Stadium. And the Jets are the home team. And then January the 1st, they finish up at Miami and there are all kinds of possibilities involving Cincinnati and Oakland and, and Tennessee the Eagles final two games at Dallas on Christmas Eve next Saturday and they finish up here in Philadelphia against the Redskins and if the Eagles win today they must win their final two to have a shot and can for the wild card and they can even win the NFC East isn't it amazing the NFC the East is absolutely crazy. Dallas wins last night. The Giants lose today. And the Eagles are going to get a win. So I think, I think the NFC East could come down to Week 17. That game, Dallas at, at New York, at the Giants. Eagles set up here playing for an onside kick. The deep man is Deion Lewis, and he's not that deep. Back at his 12-yard line. Nick Falk with the approach. And boots it away. And Lewis backpedals. And he will stay right there. They'll bring it out to the 20. Not a good day for New York area uh, football. The Giants losing at home to the Redskins. And you have seen what has taken place uh, here in Philadelphia from the Jet point of view. Yeah, three turnovers. Uh, you look at Eli Manning, three interceptions. Mark Sanchez, a couple here today. Seven turnovers. You're just not going to win a lot of games when you do that. And I just thought it was a bad omen when Hakeem Nix dropped that that pass early on from Eli Manning in that Redskins game. I was watching that in our hotel room before we left. And Vince Young has come on for Michael Vick. Ronnie Brown is a running back. And uh, Young gets back to the line, covered up by Marcus Dixon. Time for an NFL Today update. Once again, JB and Coach Bill Cowan. A 98-yard drive by the Lions. Yeah, Matthew Stafford, fourth touchdown pass of the day. The Calvin Johnson, 14 unanswered points. And the Detroit Lions, fourth quarter comeback. They take the lead 28-27. Big game for Stafford and Megatron. Back to Marv and Rich. All right, guys, second down and 10 at the 20-yard line, just under nine minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ronnie Brown finding a hole. He goes for seven, but by David Harris, the inside linebacker. you got to ask yourself, where did the Jets go from here? And you know, They had such a great week of practice. You just got the sense when we sat down with Rex last night and some of the coaches and players it just they felt really good about today and the fact that they coming off three straight wins they're playing better they got a little bit of their swagger back and they just got off to an ugly start you know the turnovers in the first half were absolutely a killer for the jets today 
I know the coaching staff likes to talk about the similarities this year and last year and two years beforehand. Ronnie Brown gets to the marker, led by Jamal Westerman. He goes for for four yards and a and a first down. But it's always different players. There's, you know, there's even though there's a sense of history of a team coming back, doesn't mean you're going to do it every season. Although they still can. Uh, certainly have an excellent shot to make the uh, the wild card, but but this performance and the loss is a major setback. It is, but you know like, you look at the turnovers, and I think that really tells the story. And they just you know, they need to eliminate that. The penalties, the missed assignments are just not good enough right now to be able to overcome all the mistakes, particularly on the road. And this an Eagle team that has not played well at home, losing five of their six previous home games. Roddy Brown. Lost the yard. Stopped by Marcus Dixon. But this is still a team with a lot of pride. You look at that man right there, Andy Reid. You know, they've won a lot of football games during his 13 years, and so you just knew that they were going to come out and play hard. Michael Vick was had been healthy, was hadn't been healthy. He got the played last week against Miami, was a little bit rusty. He had a good week of practice, was able to practice each day, so that was important. He looked sharp, and of course, LaShawn McCoy had an outstanding day rushing for over 100 yards and three touchdowns. And a bounce back for McCoy last week at Miami. His worst day of the season, just 38 yards on 27 carries. Young with nowhere to go. He's turned around, wrapped up. Muhammad Wilkerson makes the play. That'll drive the offensive line coach, Howard Mudd, absolutely crazy. He just runs right into a sack. Here's Howard Mudd. He's, a, he's been. I talked. Had a chance to talk to him before the game. You see him there with that cane. He had hip surgery, and he's the one that protected Peyton Manning for all those years in Indianapolis. He's one of the best in the business. Jets with their third sack of the day, a loss of ten, and it sets it back to a third and twenty-two at the nineteen. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Brown is the lone deep back. And a flag is, is thrown. Delay of game against the Eagles. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, we touched on this earlier. It's the ninth time that the Jets and the Eagles have played, and Philadelphia has won. The previous eight, the Eagles, the only team in the NFL the Jets have never beaten. Although, they are certainly not the same players. There's a sense of history right. here. It goes back to 1973. But it is rather unusual that one team will uh, beat another. It's the longest such streak in the NFL. The team is 9-0 and against another. It's Brown picking up five. And the punting unit will come on fourth down and long so curly drops back we're coming up on five minutes to play in this fourth quarter the Eagles jumping all over the Jets early they scored the first 28 points Curley thought about a fair catch and changed his mind and works his way to the 44-yard line. Casey Matthews on the stop, 44-yard punt. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, profiling Merrill Street, followed by the Survivor Finale and live reunion show tonight on CBS. Jets start out from their 44-yard line. And Mark Sanchez remains on the sideline. Mark Brunel coming on for the first time this season. Joe McKnight in the backfield for the first time, coming back from that hyperextension of the right elbow. McKnight 
Picks up three, stopped by Derek Landry. Mark Brunel, 41 years old, in his 19th NFL season, a three-time pro bowler, way back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know how old he is. He and I went to our first Pro Bowls together back in 1999. McBite. And he is pushed back. He had nowhere to go. Met by the free safety, Nate Allen. And the numbers on uh, Mark Sanchez. Kind of a frustrating day, you know. Talk about some unexpected uh, bad fortune. You think about the turnovers early that he wasn't a part of. You, know, you think about the fumble and the, and the tip ball from San Antonio Holmes after a good read and a good throw by Mark. And you know, he just they, they did not get off to a good start. They were playing from behind early. And I think it really took them out of their game plan. And then you start pressing. Then you start trying to make some things happen. And that's where the mistakes show up. Brunel on the screen has McKnight. And McKnight breaking a tackle. Able to get inside the 30-yard line. Tripped up by Nate Allen. Nicely done between Brunel and McKnight. It's good for 27. And that's the screen game that we've talked about. The Eagles, at least their starting defense, has done a really nice job defending that. This group, not so good. And Rex has got to be really frustrated today. He, you know, that's... You look at him, they pride themselves on playing great defensive football, 45 points. You look at Vic's production today, 274 yards through the air. You look at a 100-yard rusher. That doesn't happen very often against the Rex Ryan coach defense. So uh, not the type of performance and effort he was hoping for. First down at the 29, Sean Green, who was returned. Getting the call, goes for a couple. Mike Patterson. On the tackle, as we come up on two minutes to play in this fourth quarter. Has to feel good for Andy Reid, who has been hearing the criticism all season long. And it'll be a much more pleasant Sunday night and Monday. Yeah, it really will be. One of the, actually the longest tenured coach in the NFL, 13 years, 133 wins. Uh, just two losing seasons. This guy has had a nice run here in Philadelphia. Two minutes remaining of the game. 45-19 Eagles. Follow this Oakland losing. Tennessee, as we mentioned, losing. So that means that Baltimore and Pittsburgh have clinched playoff spots. And the Jets, due to the many ramifications involved, Still remain in that sixth and final wild card slot, no yeah, matter what uh, you know what happened here today. Yeah, they're going to be happy to to hear that after this disappointing loss. The fact that Oakland and Tennessee both lost. Uh, good news for the Jets. Second down and eight, and McKnight, the runner, stopped by Roll, picked up just two on the play, but the Jets feeling that they they'd have to win out to assure that wild card spot and it puts them in in a jam over the final two weeks of the season yeah they have to get busy you know and they've got to take care of business next week against the giants and of course they've got to go down to miami who's played some better football here the last month of the season so uh, they've they've made it they made the path to the playoffs very very difficult minute 20 left of the game third down and six brunel no one in sight except Eagle defenders, and it was almost picked off by Jaquan Jarrett, rookie out of Temple. Well, you look at some early game headlines. How about this? The Packers go down to the Kansas City Chiefs. The quest for an undefeated season over in the Indianapolis Colts, Marm. They get their first win of the season over Tennessee. That's incredible. Donald Brown, 161 rushing yards. My guy, Dan Orlovsky, the quarterback, gets Your his guy. first ever win. Yeah. And, of course, the Giants lose at home to the Redskins. All right, fourth down play, fourth and six. And again, Brunel way off with uh, Curley, the intended receiver. NFL Today update time, JV and Coach Bill Callen. Arizona wins it in OT. Yeah, Jay Feely, a 22-yard field goal. Arizona, four straight win. Big win right there over Cleveland. Cards improved to 7-7. Seven and seven. Back 
to Marv Albert and Rich Gannon. All right, a first and 10 for the Eagles now at their 25. And the Eagles going to their third quarterback, Mike Kafka, second year player out of Northwestern, who has appeared in two previous games. In fact, 11 of 16 overall, a fourth round draft pick uh, last season. And they're just going to run it out. Just an appearance for that's no fun, is it? Mike you come Kefka. in, you got to kneel yeah. down a couple times. A little cameo here. I'd say no thanks. Keep Vince Young in to do it. <laughs> They're high on Mike Kafka. You mentioned more of a second-year player at Northwestern, and you know what really hurt these type of players is the fact we didn't have an off-season. This is really where we see a lot of improvement from year one to year two with the young quarterbacks. Good look at Michael Vick. Get back in that hyperbaric chamber this week. Spent a couple hours in there every night. Have you ever been in yes. the hyperbaric? I have. I it's not a lot so, of fun. So knowledgeable about it. <laughs> now that'll do it. So the Eagles are now 6-8. and eight, Still alive for a wild card playoff spot. Also for a di the division lead. Eagles winning two straight for only the second time this season. The Jets dropped to 8-6. and six. The win streak ends at three and they are now in a battle for that final wild card with the tennessee and cincinnati and oakland all involved so that will wrap it michael vick and LaShawn mccoy the stars offensively for philadelphia jason babin with three more sacks he now leads the nfl tonight on cbs 60 minutes followed by the survivor finale and reunion show for Rich Gannon, I'm Marv Albert saying so long from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. You have been watching the NFL on CBS. Do you have a decent sense of where, where you're at now and what you can predict what's coming? Well, listen, every, every week, the best thing I can tell you is every week is different. You know, in in the NFL, and it depends on the team you're playing, the matchup, so on. But um, I know the guys. I, I know for sure the guys will play hard and aggressive, and um, I, I think they're in the right frame of mind to do that. And they're they're spending a lot of time fundamental with their fundamentals. They're spending a lot of time with the game plan. Um, it looks like some of the younger guys are getting better uh, each week uh, that we've gone along here, and and so. Um, you know, when, when you play well as a team, you, you pull it together and play well as, uh, as a team. I think that, um, you know, that, that's the important thing here. And that's that's what we're doing right now. Your thoughts on Vic's play today? Well, he did some good things. I, you know, it looked like he knocked the rust off last week, came back. He had some beautiful throws today. And, and uh, I thought he managed everything well and did a good job. And is anything surprised about exactly how well Shady's played this year with the touchdowns, the rushing yards, everything? No, he's playing well. He's uh, staying aggressive. Uh, really, on the fumble, he was maybe being too aggressive and, <clears throat> and trying to get that that extra extra yard and let the ball get away from his body and have the problem with it. But I appreciate uh, the energy that he brings to our offense and um, the way the aggressive play that he he's had. Uh, it feels good to still have a chance to, you know, even be considered in the playoff race. You know, we've been through a lot, and this team is very resilient. You know, I have a great deal of resolve, and, and we just try to go out each and every week and get better. I enjoy playing this game. My teammates are always telling me to get down and get out of bounds, and I try, but it's hard. You know, I, I felt good, you know, as, as, the, as the game, um, you know, went on, and, you know, it's you know, just one of those injuries where it just continues to bother you. But, I, you know, I've been dealing with it, and... and you know, hope it'll get better, you know, as the week goes on. You know, I'm hoping. The defense played great. You know, got to give a lot of credit to our defense, give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They did great in protection uh, and holding up. And the Jets have a great defensive front. And uh, they have great players on, on, on defense. So, um, you know, the field position that we had and, and the way our line played uh, was phenomenal. And, and that's what wins football games. And if we continue to do that uh, week, you know, week in and week out, uh, for the next two weeks, uh, we find ourselves in a position where we can advance. And uh, but uh, it all goes back to, you know, what we was talking about earlier and the question that I tried to negate. We still need help. <laughs> so.
you know, I think when we focus and, and really gel and really believe in what we're doing, it, you know, we go out and, and put a great game together. So I'm proud of the guys, and, and I'm, I'm proud of myself and my daughter. Before I left the house today, she she asked me, we was in the room by ourselves, she asked me, Daddy, are we going to win today? Can we win today? And I told her, yeah, we'll win today, Jada. And, and uh, you know, I felt a lot of pressure coming into this game because I had to hold true to that promise. So I just thank God that I'm able to go home and, and, and look at her and smile and say we did it. Nice job, huh? Nice job. Give yourself yeah. Now listen, listen, schedule, make sure you check your itineraries. You're off tomorrow, and then we're back together on Tuesday, Saturday game. I appreciate those guys that, that battle through this thing, huh? All right, a couple injuries in there. We need to make sure we take care of those and get ourselves back ready to roll. Big one next week, huh? Huge win Sunday against the Jets for the Philadelphia Eagles and still an outside chance for the Eagles to make the postseason. If the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Eagles all finish at 8-8, eight eight, it would be the Eagles Moving on to the postseason. For the word on the street with those Eagles, we welcome in Jonathan Tamari of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Help us understand how the Eagles can look so poorly at times and come out and play so well against a quality team like the Jets. Well, we're still trying to figure it out ourselves, but the big difference the past two weeks has been the defense. They've created sacks. They've created turnovers. They did it against the Jets yesterday, four sacks on Mark Sanchez. The defense has helped them get leads, and then once they've had the lead, they've been putting the pressure on opposing quarterbacks and keeping the lead, unlike, they did, unlike what they did earlier this year. As far as the offense goes, Michael Vick with a heroic performance playing with the type of injury he played with with his ribs. Yeah, he had a rough game back against Miami. He said he was still pretty sore after that game. Seemed to be doing a little better this week against the Jets. He was a lot sharper with his throws. He had his first rushing touchdown of the year. So it just seems to be healing slowly. And the, the more comfortable he gets, the better he's playing on the field, obviously. Inside that facility, does it feel like you're covering a team uh, with an outside chance of making the postseason that played very well yesterday? Or like a team that wants these two games to be done and this disappointing season to be behind them? Oh, no, absolutely. They're looking at this as an opportunity to make the playoffs. They've been saying for weeks that, hey, crazy things happen in the NFL. Some crazy things happen that allowed the Eagles to make the playoffs in 2008. So they're looking back at that memory and knowing that if they keep winning, that they might have a chance. They're going to need some help. They could win this week and still get eliminated. But the players are optimistic and they think they've got a shot and they know that their only shot is to keep winning. So they're, they're determined and, and they think they could be in it. You expect Andy Reid to be around coaching the Eagles next season? I do. I think these last two weeks have really given management. It seems that they would be more inclined to bring him back, and they've certainly given them an argument to bring him back. They can point to some positives, some improvements in the defense. They can point to the fact that the team did not quit on him, even when it all seemed lost. So I think that gives Reid a pretty good shot of returning, even if they lose one of these next two games. And the defense was strong yesterday, but for most of the season, it's been a, a weak point there in Philadelphia. What do you think about the status of Juan Castillo, the defensive coordinator? I think his job still hangs in the balance a bit. Like Reed, he's got a little more credibility after these two wins. The defense has really powered them over Miami and over the Jets. But if they go out and get blown out by Dallas or struggle against Washington, then it looks like these two games are maybe just a blip of improvement against a disappointing season. So I still think it depends on if they can sustain this level of success. Yeah, mostly a negative season uh, through 14 games. What is the biggest positive though, not just with yesterday, but about this team as they play the final two games? I think the positive, if you're looking into the future, it's got to be LaShawn McCoy. He's a young running back who's really established himself as probably one of the best in the league, leads the league in touchdowns. He set team records for touchdowns uh, on the ground and overall yesterday. And he's still very young, only in his third season. So he's a guy who looks like he could be a linchpin of the team for many years to come.